Steelers versus Bills kicks off 6.30 p.m. at Acrisure Stadium Saturday night. We'll get you ready with that with some pregame talk, talking about why we need to see the run game work compared to the pass game. Some defensive notes as well. All here in the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, here with Jenna Harner on a Friday episode. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things in the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find this show on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoy it. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all of your daily Monday through Friday episodes, as well as our bonus content. We thank you for making the Locked On Steelers podcast your first listen every day because we're your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On NFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash Locked On NFL to post your job for free terms and conditions apply as I said before we're joined by jenna harner of channel 11 wpxi she's chilling training camp is done jenna as much as it is. and we got a guest appearance from zeke here zeke is making jenna. guest appearance he's, he's getting on camera he wants to he wants to give his Steeler takes we appreciate <laughs> uh, our pup zeke here coming on the show but jenna training camp is done we are we are finally not going to st vincent college anymore and listen i love Going to St. Vincent College every year, it's it's great. It's an awesome opportunity to meet so many fans. Shout out to all the fans that I met today even. Well, we're recording this on Thursday. It was awesome. But let me tell you that our drive there and back for like four weeks is a lot. And I'm so glad that I don't have to do it anymore. We can just go to the, back to the south side. But I think that there, there's there been a lot to see this camp, especially because of the rookie class the Steelers brought in. And it's been so intriguing. I mean, there's been so many eyes on – Broderick Jones, on Darnell Washington, on Nick Herbig, on Keanu Benton, and rightfully so. But I think also, too, Zeke has been very excited about the youngsters. Too. <laughs> Can you tell? He's thrilled. He's ready for it. But it, it's signaling that we're getting closer to the start of the season. You know, the dog days of summer are getting our winding down. They're ending. We're moving back to the south side. The players, as much as they've enjoyed their time at St. Vincent, they're like, hey, you know, we're ready to go back to, we're ready to get back into our routines, sleep in their own beds, which I understand that. But it is just kind of ramping up where we're a couple weeks away from the start of the NFL season. And it's like, man, this is, this is exciting. This is the time we love. Indeed it is. But I want to talk about this aspect of it to, to, with this upcoming preseason game against the Bills. The Steelers, first of all, the Bills and the Steelers look like they're going to be playing a lot of their starters uh, for a significant portion of this game. Mike Tomlin even confirmed that TJ Watt will be participating in, in, in this game. Uh, the Bills saying that they'll have their guys, their starters in for at least, or at least over a quarter there. Um, but uh, one thing that I think that needs to be seen at some point, and, and it doesn't necessarily need to be seen in this for in this second preseason game, it really needs to be seen in the first regular season game, but it's the tell that the running off the running offense is going to be what they've been hoping it would be with the additions that they've made on the offensive line. You know, the growth of Najee Harris and Jalen Warren is a one-two punch. And if they can actually be a, a group that takes over drives and games, we saw the passing game, you know, in a first preseason game, pass its test, just walk down the field, threw the ball, Kenny Pickett going six or seven for a touchdown against the Buccaneers. And, and you still want to see that again. You don't want to just not throw the ball and just assume that that's always going to carry itself. But I, I think this, this offensive line and this physical group here, they want it, they, they've talked about being bullies. I think it would be really refreshing to see them be bullies, even for just a drive. Like for just a drive, we're like, hey, you know what? This is it. We're running the ball. Unless Kenny, Kenny sees something that's wide open. And we want to see how you guys move a first team NFL defense that isn't your own defense that you've been practicing up against. Jenna, what do you expect from this group in that situation? Well, we want to see more of the balance, right? Because again, they came out firing. That first drive looked really, really solid from the Steelers starters offensively when it came to the pass game. But now you do want to see that balance because you know that this solid run game is going to be what sets up that really solid pass game for the Steelers offense. It's going to be really balanced. I know a lot of people throughout the season or throughout the offseason have really been commenting, you know, hey, look, 
this team wants to get back to ground and pound football and they do, but they also have the offensive weapons to be explosive. And these two really seem to balance each other out in a really perfect way for how this offense potentially is going to operate this year. And so we need to see some really solid runs from Najee Harris. We need to see some solid holes created by the offensive line, which we've seen a lot of really good things from them, but I want to see just, can they do it consistently? Can we hear Mike Tomlin talk about it all the time, but when a team, is going to run against you and you know they're going to run against you and you can't stop it anyway can that Steelers offense can this offensive line do that for a drive can they sustain it yes it's going to be you know mix it's good we're going to see it mixed up a little bit especially with both starters on both sides playing but can we see this offense really be consistent and hey we're sticking to the run game right now we are going full speed ahead with the run game on this drive the Bills defense knows it and they can't stop it Right. I think that's a big thing here, even if not just for the offense as a unit, but also for Najee Harris specifically, because I'll say this. I, I've been one of the people who have been saying, like, you know what? I think y'all y'all are getting too, too hard on Najee Harris because the offensive line hasn't been that good the last two years until the end of last season when Najee Harris was running the ball better. And Najee Harris uh, hasn't been had, having as many opportunities. And I'll say this. Najee Harris has had moments where he's impressed in camp, like plays where he's kind of turned it on and made it happen but he hasn't been a consistent force for the Steelers in camp and he doesn't need to be because I've had the, I've had it's funny I've had this conversation off camera with our friend Jim Wexel from 24 7 sports and our friend Alan Saunders from SteelersNow.com and you know and just about like did we do we need to see uh, Najee Harris be a beast in training camp because we've seen that for two years and last year that led to him being hurt to start the season so I, I think that, that that Najee Harris might be getting a hey Najee chill out once you're ready once you're healthy for the season uh, so he's not going as hard in camp but I, I do think it would be refreshing to just see it for at least a drive where he's getting the ball he's getting space and you're, you're seeing the remnants of what you want to see in a Steelers run game that can take over uh, at least a drive and like you said control like take over the opponent's will control the ball on the ground and force your way down down the field with that ground game should the team ever need that and correct me if i'm wrong but i feel like there wasn't I, Najee didn't have a run in that game against the bucks not a single game. handoff yeah there wasn't there wasn't a single handoff and there didn't need to be because we knew what that uh, the what the offense was looking to do in that first game but this is that time this is these are those moments where you need to see that you need to see hey can the offensive line create holes? Is there going to be space for him? And is he going to be able to shake a guy off and get an extra, you know, three, five, seven yards? Is he going to be able to make that impact that we saw him make in the second half of last season? Because that's been something he's been focusing on. We know that at the end of last season, we were talking to him towards the end of things. And even through OTAs, he wasn't satisfied with what he did in the run game last year and what this offense can be capable of doing when he knows he can get going when this offensive line can get going and that consistency we saw from them in the end of the season, the second half after the bye week last year, that is something that they're all looking to carry over. And so if they can come out there on Saturday night and do just that tomorrow night, wow, don't know what day anything is. <laughs> um, then I think that there's going to be a lot of optimism about the Steelers offense. And again, how are they going to look against starters too? I think that's the most intriguing thing as well, because we saw the fact that, Tampa Bay's guys, it was their second stringers that were in when the Steelers offense was out. So yes, it wasn't the majority of the guys that they're going to see on Sundays week in, week out. How are they going to look against this Bills defense that is a pretty solid defense in the NFL? It, it is. And I think it's it's a major question that we'll see in this game. And again, you still want it is not to say that you don't want to see Kenny Pickett and George Pickens, and Deontay Johnson and all the receivers in this game work. I just think that after the showing in the Buccaneers game and the fact that they're probably going to get uh, multiple drives with the first team offense versus the first team defense have at least one of those drives be one that shows off the run or multiple drives, but yeah. it needs to be a factor there because I think if you see, if you see positivity from the Steelers run game and you see positivity from the Steelers pass game, then it can be that balanced unit that yeah. we've been saying all off season that they're striving to be. And if they're that balanced unit, that can hurt you in multiple ways. It forces teams into guessing games. And then when you get them into guessing games, that's when you can catch more mistakes. And that's all I think the Steelers offense really needs to get itself going, which again is why I think for Najee and also for Najee Harris, again, specifically him, 
I, I think that, you know, Jalen Warren continues to look good in camp. I also think that if Jalen Warren got Najee Harris's workload, it would be, it would, you'd see a lot of similar issues there, but Najee Harris, I think needs to prove it this season that he is the guy. There's a reason they drafted him in the first round and be that playmaker for the Steelers offense. And I think he's looking to do just that because he knows what he's capable of. I mean, the highlight reels that we saw when he was coming, when he was coming into the draft and, you know, coming out of Alabama, we see it, we see it, you know, in spurts from him, but mm -hmm. also too, it's the fact, and I guess this is me, but I, I'm thinking it's more of the product of what the offensive line has been for him recently yeah. compared to what it is now. I mean, it was such a focal point in the off season to go out, to rebuild, to bring in a guy like Isaac Sayamalu, to bring in, um, Nate Herbig kind of back up, obviously drafting Broderick Jones in that way, knowing what's going to happen and creating the competition between him and Dan Moore, who has stepped his game up as well. But can this offensive line produce the way that Najee Harris can work to the best of his ability while also stepping his game up and bringing his best I, I'm not saying effort in that way, but bringing bringing his best, you know, performance to the table when they all know what the what they're capable of and what things can look like when they're clicking really well and when the wheel is in motion. Absolutely. We also want to talk some defense here as they're going to get to go up against Josh Allen and that Bills offense. We'll do that in just a second here on the Locked on Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, here with Jenna Harner. Stick with us. We got a lot more to talk about. But first, I want to remind you guys, this show is sponsored by LinkedIn every day these days there's every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business that's why you need the right people on your team to help your small businesses fire on all cylinders and that's where LinkedIn jobs comes in to help because they make it easier to find people that you want to talk to faster and for free you can create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people then add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire it's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the candidates that you want to talk to faster. Did you know that every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter. We continue with Jenna Harner here from Channel 11 WPXI. Jenna, let's talk about the defense here because we did see some of the defense, but most of the starting defense didn't play last game. Cam Hayward didn't didn't play, neither did Larry Ogunjobi, neither did uh, TJ Watt. Alex Highsmith and Levi Wallace played three snaps, but uh, just uh, excuse me, uh, Patrick Peterson, uh, Joey Porter Jr., Minka Fitzpatrick, Devontae KZ, Keanu Neal. Down the line, most of the starters didn't play, but it seems like that will be that won't be the case for this game. Watt's gonna play now. Larry Ogunjobi, as far as we understand, probably still won't play. He's been in a walking boot in practice. We've seen that. But if, if you're the defense, what is the biggest thing that you want to see from this defense in this in this Saturday game against a Bills team that's as talented with Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, and company? You mentioned Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs and company. That's exactly what I'm looking for is mm. just how can they – you can't say shut down because with a quarterback like that, with a receiver like that, that's pretty much going to be impossible. But how can they look to limit Josh Allen? How can they look to limit Stephon Diggs and what that Bills offense looks to do and how explosive they are? I mean, gosh, we all remember what was that, week five last year, the yes. third play of the game, second play Come of the on. game. It was 98-yard touchdown to Gabe Davis. Yes. He's a weapon for them. I'm trying to remember. I'm spacing because Tyler Croft is not the name. It's ty it's something, but the their new tight end, the Bills rookie tight Dalton end, Dalton Kincaid, exactly. or is that the Packers? Well, nope, you're right, Dalton Kincaid. Tyler Croft was a former tight end for the Bills. This is what happened when you're way too in the NFL <laughs> and you covered too many teams. Uh, but he, Dalton Kincaid has been getting just rave reviews from the Bills across the board, from reporters, from even national media. So he's going to be a guy too. I would. I'm absolutely having my eyes on and just. How is this defense going to take away these big offensive weapons that we know the Bills have? Because again, you're not you're not stopping Josh Allen completely, but how are you limiting him? How are you frustrating him? How are you giving him looks that he takes that extra second or two and is a little bit confused about? And then next thing you know, TJ Watt, Alex Highsmith, someone's bearing down on him, looking to get that pressure, looking to generate. Um, get a sack and generate, you know, any defensive power that they can. I really think that 
it's going to be really fun to just see how this defense looks. And also speaking of how they look, just what they show. We've seen a lot of really intriguing looks from this defense. How are they going to look to utilize Joey Porter Jr. knowing that right now he isn't a starter and probably isn't going to be for the season, but that's something that's also okay. I I mean, I know everybody always wants to point to, hey, these rookies, they draft them for a reason. They draft them so high up, they need to start. I don't think Joey Porter Jr. needs to start immediately. It has to be the go out there, shut down everybody when they have Patrick Peterson and Levi Wallace, and they can work Joey Porter Jr. in and some of the looks that they have defensively. So it's going to be, I mean, this is going to, this is that quote unquote, you know, dress rehearsal game. And this is going to be what we see. I mean, don't expect the defense to be out there, you know, for a crazy long period of time, but this is going to be, Hey, you are facing right now. One of the best quarterbacks in the NFL time to show what you've been doing all camp, what of what you've been doing all off season. I, I agree. There's, there's a lot that you want to show off there. We, we did a lot of the show on Thursday. Go check that out. If you get a chance, but we did a lot of the show on Thursday about the secondary because we talked to Minka Fitzpatrick and Patrick Peterson about the chemistry that they want to show. And, and let's face it, this group had not seen much of the field to have a, uh, even in training camp because of injuries or because of resting guys and excused absences, but they've started to, and we've seen the product of that in some of these games be or so, excuse some of these practices, excuse me, at training camp because George Pickens and De- Deontay Johnson, they were terrorizing the Steelers, the Steelers secondary for a little bit. And, and not that they weren't making plays against the Steelers start, on, on defense because they were but man when Mika Fitzpatrick and company started to like really get into practice it became even more competitive and that's where that's where it became very interesting to see how they go and yeah you'll want to see how they do against a, a, you know a, a guy who's a proven quarterback against with proven weapons uh and unproven weapons that you're going that, that, you're, that you're that you're seeing there uh and, and again like you said a team that ripped the top off of this defense multiple times last season and embarrassed them in many ways uh as, as you know going into the end of the first half of the half of the season so i, I agree you want to see that from this defense you want to see that for the secondary for them to handle that but you also want to see can they do what their priority is as far as stopping the run to get so that they can make sure that the bills running backs don't get anything going that josh allen can't create too much with his legs and then it forces them into third and long situations so that their pass rush can win more matchups because I, I think the bills they're still one of the more talented teams in the nfl but you get the sense with with the the situation with stefan diggs and with how their contracts are, are situated right now this might be the bills like last chance of a season to win with this crew around Josh Allen. Josh Allen's going to get plenty more chances. His window is not closed at all. But as far as the 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 core that they assembled around him, it could be similar to how when the Steelers had to retool their core around Roethlisberger in the early 2010s after that crew from the late 2000s kind of aged out of the system. I think the Bills are similar there. So this will be a good chance to face a team that is still talented, but I think is no longer – the team that everyone's looking to, to overthrow the chiefs as the premier team in the AFC. And especially do back to your point on the run defense. That was something that we heard Tara lost talk about um, after the game against the preseason game against the bucks, where he said, you know, that was kind of one of their big areas of focus because of how big of an area of focus it was after what happened last season. And they fared really well, especially on a lot of those, you know, third and one situations, even the fourth and one and granted, you know, some of those resulted in false starts from the bucks offense. And, you know, at that point you're just taking that and running with it, but how is this defense going to be able to stop a run when you have a mobile quarterback and a guy like Josh Allen? Yes. They've been going against Kenny Pickett day in day out for the last three and a half weeks or so, but how are you going to be able to limit a guy who is so mobile, who can use his run or use his legs to run really well, even though the Bills coaching staff and everybody, you just hear him being like, hey, maybe, maybe he's easy to, or, you know, take a little bit of a break there and, you know, you look to utilize your other weapons. Don't go full steam ahead with your legs. And we've seen Josh Allen kind of progress um, throughout the years in that aspect of his game. But how can you look to limit a guy like that? It's it's a good question, and I think it'll be one that the Steelers will be tasking themselves with here. I want to also talk to Jenna about who else should we be looking at in this team, not necessarily for them to step up to make the team better right away, but maybe to make this roster because cuts are coming soon, and this is going to be a major uh, storyline for some of these guys that are lower down on the depth chart. We'll talk about that more here on the Locked on Steelers podcast. Stick with us. We'll be right back.
Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, Chris Carter, Jenna Harner, breaking things down on uh, on a Friday episode here. Jenna, when you look at the Steelers depth chart and you look across the board, there's a lot of guys who I think have been in situations where competition has has really risen to the top, uh, but and they may not be meeting that standard, but they need to at least make the standard to make the final 53. Are there some players that you're looking at on, on Saturday night and saying like, man, if you don't step up, it's going to be a tough question for you to be on the first round of cuts and in the, and the second round of cuts. I think I, 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 my answer here is a little more. He feels a little safer versus not as safe. Like I think like he's, you know, what your final four in, if we're going back to basketball references here versus your last or your last four in versus your first four out. Anthony McFarland is a guy that I do want to see a little bit more from. He looked really good in that first preseason game against the Buccaneers. And there have been glimpses during camp where we've seen him look good, but I do want to see just a little bit more from him. I know Tomlin talked earlier this week about wanting to use him in kick return situations. I think we're going to want to see some solid play from him there if he does get the opportunity on Saturday night. But I I do want to see just a little bit more from him in terms of his pass protection as well. Just what is he going to be able to do? Because yes, he's behind Najee Harris and Jalen Warren, but is he going to be able to really stake his claim and say, Hey, look, you guys drafted me for a reason. I am valuable to this team. I show, I can show you what I have. He has that blazing speed, but can he kind of put everything together this game? And we can really kind of see that big jump from him where it's, it's like, you know, Hey, this guy should be on this roster. I, I I think that's a good one. Anthony McFarland certainly in there. Also, I want to correct myself. This NFL used to have multiple cut down days. They have one cut day now. It's now on August 29th, uh, when you know after the uh, the final preseason game uh, for for all the NFL teams. But um, I agree with you. Anthony McFarland's in that category. I think a guy that we brought up here a lot and he had a rough uh, rough first preseason game. Kendrick Green really needs to show something. Yeah. Because the nice. Steelers have now tried uh, more of Nate Herbig at center. They've given Spencer Anderson some shots there. And I think if they don't like any of these choices, like if Kendrick Green bombs and they, and they don't think that Herbig and Anderson are, are up to the task to be the number two center, they're probably going to go find somebody who, who can yeah. do the job. They're probably going to go find some, you know, I know Ryan McCollum, you know, is officially on the depth chart as the third guy, but I, I think the Steelers, they want to be, they, they have made a lot of efforts, Omar Khan and Andy Weidel in the front office to make sure that the depth across the board is very solid. You look at the receivers, they, if, if, if two guys got hurt, they'd at least have some answers there to step up. If you look at quarterback, they've got Mitch Trubisky and Mason Rudolph, maybe the best backup quarterback room in the NFL, as far as how many starts that this, that group has between them. Yeah. Um, you know, Najee Harris has Jalen Warren, Pat Frymuth has Gentry Hayward and Washington, and even Roddy Williams looks really good in camp. Yeah. The fourth option there. Uh, we've talked about how deep the defensive line is. The cornerback room has some answers. The safety room has a few guys there, but uh, you look at center, that might be the one position now. Even edge rusher was was answered earlier in the, in the offseason. But center is a position that if Kendrick Green's not ready, then they need answers. So for me, one big guy that I'm looking at a lot in this in this second preseason game and eventually in the third preseason, ga- preseason game is Kendrick Green. Yeah, and unfortunately, he really did not have a great game against the Buccaneers. And that was something that, you know, there was so much hype about him. Oh, he's playing, you know, he's getting the fullback reps in camp. He's looking great. It's this fun thing. But at the end of the day, you have to be good at your day job. And unfortunately, in that first game, he really just was not up to par, up to what they expect of him and probably up to what he expects of himself. So he's definitely going to need to show a lot in this game. And just, again, I feel like I've said consistency a bunch. He's going to need to show that he's going to need to show hey look I I, this play isn't going to get blown up I'm going to be able to protect the quarterback I'm going to be able to do my job and create the gaps that I need to create so that we can have success as an offense and we really did not see that from him on Friday so he's absolutely someone that you're going to need to take just a little step forward or again just show like a, a solid performance for the coaching staff to say hey you know we have enough reason to keep you here I, I agree. He needs to show that. I'm also going to be looking in the secondary for certain guys, Jenna, because in some of these guys I don't think are our roster roster risks right now. 
But the Steelers are going to want to solidify what their nickel option is, who's going to be like their slot cornerback type guy that can be there. We know that Patrick Peterson has been bumping into that role. They've also thrown in one of their safeties there. But Shannon Sullivan and Elijah Riley were both brought in for that role. There, But there's only so, so many roster spots to go around. And so between – the the, you know, the the slot cornerback option and the extra safety options that they have. I think it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out. Miles Killebrew is kind of that given first safety off the uh, off the bench because he's he's a special teams uh, you know ace for, for the team. But Trey Norwood, who was injured for a bit, is back. He's a guy that I think needs to step up. Kenny Robinson had a really good start to camp, but I think has fizzled a little bit since that's, that's that hot start. Uh, Elijah Riley also similarly really good for a while, and I think he quieted down a little bit, but he's still out there. Uh, Shannon Sullivan is the veteran that they brought in from the Vikings. So uh, there's options out there, but – that's where this secondary, I think guys are making their, hey, James Pierre would have been on this list if it wasn't for Corey Trice's injury. But now I think with 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 uh, with that injury, he's the one outside corner that you want available if Peterson or Porter or Wallace go down and you need that extra person to go on the outside right away. But as far as guys that can play safety or guys that can play that slot corner spot, they need to prove themselves in this game if they want to get a job. Yeah, I was going to say defensively, Kenny Robinson is my guy that I was looking at just to really kind of take that step because we did see a lot of really good things from him in the early on of camp, especially when you had a lot of that secondary out with injuries, with their absences, things like that. He filled in and he looked pretty solid. But now with the return of Micah Fitzpatrick, with the return of some of the other guys that have been injured and that just, you know, we're seeing different looks defensively. I think he's somebody in my mind that, you know, we should look to see a splash play or two for him if he wants to really solidify his spot on this roster and say, hey, look, I'm here you guys brought me in for a reason and here's why what I'm showing you here. I can be this reliable backup when you need me to be. And I, I think he has a lot of talent, but I think it's just like, we need to see just that little bit more from him in this game to really get, you know, the coaching staff in front office to say, Hey, we're going to keep you here. Yeah, I, I agree the, again, these are all just players that I I'm, we're just looking at and thinking like, Hey, this could be interesting. I also wonder how the linebacker room shakes out. Nick Kwiatkowski, Kwiatkowski had a really good camp up until his shoulder injury, and then he was really good in that preseason game. But his injury has opened the door for guys like Tanner Muse to maybe make some noise there. Um, and I don't know if the Steelers will keep more than four off-ball linebackers yes. uh, because of you know their other constraints on the roster. I think they'll want to have a deeper defensive line. I think they'll want to have uh, maybe some extra corners out there uh, and extra safeties. But at linebacker, that could be really interesting because you know you're keeping Holcomb, your Roberts, and Alexander, and I believe Mark Robinson is safe as well uh, mm -hmm. because they like his trajectory as a young player. But, man – I'd be really intrigued to see can Tanner Muse earn a spot here or does Nick Kwiatkowski's early performance in camp earn him that respect to be there? And I don't know why this year. I feel like maybe it's just because we feel this way every year, but I feel like this year there are so many different ways that they can go to create and really solidify this 53-man roster where I feel like the decisions sometimes come easier than others, but I feel like there's a lot of guys I'm looking at where I'm like, you can make your case for him making the roster over this guy. You can make your case for this guy making it over this guy. Like there's a lot of guys right there that I think if you have to really, when you're picking and choosing, if you're the front office staff, it's an incredibly difficult decision. One, I'm happy that we don't have to make, but it is, it does feel this year to me just that much more competitive and that there's so many guys you can make realistic cases for, including guys like you just mentioned there. Yeah. So there's a lot of good competitions coming up here, but again, good competition is good for the Steelers. It's it's better to have it's better to have so many different spots where you have guys fighting over fighting over positions than having so many where you're like, mm, man, I guess he can make it because again, we're talking about fourth and fifth options now at different positions. We're not talking about like, man, is is. Uh, you know, is James Pierre going to be a starting cornerback this year? You know, because that's been that's been some years where they've had to they, they've had to deal with that, uh, but. All in all, I think the Steelers, there's a lot of exciting aspects to this preseason game. We'll be on hand at Acrisure Stadium, 6.30 p.m. Jenna will be there. I'll be there covering the game. Jenna, thanks so much for joining us here on the Friday edition of the Locked On Steelers podcast. Let people, let people know where they can find you, follow you, and get more of your work. 
Well, thank you for having me as always. We are well into the preseason. Regular season is almost here. I'm so excited. I can't wait. You can find me on Twitter at Jenna Harner 11, Instagram, Jenna underscore Harner, and locally here on WPXI channel 11. We'll have all your post game coverage from Acrisure Stadium, Steelers, Bills, preseason game two on Saturday night. So if you're here, tune in. Um, we got a lot of really cool stories too coming your way, things that we've been working on. So stay tuned for those. Absolutely. Thanks again, Jenna, for joining us here. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques. Read my work at the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, post-gazette.com. And find me at the Locked On Steelers podcast, Monday through Friday, breaking down your Pittsburgh Steelers on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoy it. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all of your daily Monday through Friday episodes as well as our bonus content. And if you want to help out the show even further, go on Apple Podcasts, rate us five stars with a positive comment. You do both at the same time. You get a special shout-out at the end of the show like this person, Julius with a salute emoji who says favorite podcast five stars locked on Steelers is my absolute favorite podcast I love the insights and the analysis about the players and the team Chris manages to find new topics in the Steelers world every day even in the off season since I start since I started listening to the pot podcast uh in March 2022 I haven't missed a single episode keep up the great works greetings from Hamburg Germany Julius from Germany that's how far Steeler Nation reaches. Just a reminder to all out there. Also, shout out to uh, the fan I met from Idaho at Steelers training camp. I met a lot of Steelers tra 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 training camp fans from everywhere, even one from France. So shout out to all of y'all for saying hi. Thanks again for checking out the show. I'll be doing a special bonus episode after the Saturday night game. So if you are if you want my takes immediately after the game, it will be on here. Might take some time because I'll be at the game uh, and probably talking to players in, in the locker room afterwards. But we'll have that there. And, of course, we'll have a fresh Monday episode for you right here on the Locked On Steelers podcast.